All right, so hello everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. My name is Michelle Story and this is my analysis and evaluation PowerPoint for the book Regarding the Pain of Others by Susan Sontag. Oops. So I really thought that this quote in her book right off the bat was very powerful and it really got like really intrigued me. So I wanted to start off my PowerPoint with this quote, whether the uh, photograph is understood as a naive object or the work of a experienced artifactor, its meaning and the viewer's response depends on how the picture is identified or misidentified. That is on words. So like I said, it really intrigued me. It really got me into the thought process and the mentality that I really felt like I needed to be in to truly understand what the book, you know, was trying to tell me and what the hangup is when we are looking at photos or paintings or art and trying to interpret them. So here's the first photo that right off the bat, like I, um, like I said, there were a few things right in the very beginning of the story that really caught my attention. And this depiction uh, and description of this photo was in the very beginning of the book and it caught my attention for one, because of what I imagined it to be and two, because, because of how emotional it felt for me, the way that they were describing it as a mother, I really felt like I needed to include it. So this is the land of distribution meeting that was in Spain in 1936. The way that the book describes it to me, it's really funny. I actually totally envisioned this picture completely wrong. And like I said, that's when I decided, okay, <laughs> I have to include this picture because I was more emotional and envisioned it being something different than it was. And I knew then that that's probably why this picture was so overly used during that time era. Um, full disclaimer, I do want to say that there might be trigger warnings on here. Some of the the photographs that I did choose are very graphic. They do deal with death and nature. And also another disclaimer, um, our professor told us to be careful how many words we put on each slide. <laughs> and I'm honestly the biggest offender of too many words on each slide. Uh, one thing that I have learned about myself as being a student and going through the process of this is that I write my notes down, I put them in the notes of the PowerPoint, I print them out, I write them out, and I forget everything I want to say. So I am just going to just fully disclose that there's too many words on these slides, and I sincerely apologize, but my anxiety um, just gets the better of me sometimes. So bear with me. I won't read them word for word, but they, it is there really mainly for me. So moving on. I really chose to analyze this um, picture because I really wanted to understand very from the very beginning why this picture was so widely misinterpreted. Often as showing someone fearfully scanning this, this, this photograph is uh, often recalled by people that have seen it as showing somebody who is fearfully scanning the skies looking for attacker planes. The expression on her face and the faces around her seem changed, I'm, I'm sorry, seem charged with apprehensiveness. This was really powerful to me because I envisioned somebody who was in a landscape, who was not in a meeting, who was not surrounded by other people and looking up to the sky with her baby nursing and just looking in fear when I had originally looked at this picture. So in, as the book goes on and through the chapter, Sontag goes in to explain in the same insert that memory alters the images that we see to what our memory needs, which I thought was extremely powerful because what's, what's really funny is that this photo 
in the state that I've shared it in the first pair in the first slide was very focused on her and nothing around her. And in fact, it's actually at a huge outdoor political meeting that was taken actually months before the war had even started. So there were no fighter planes. They weren't looking for anybody. There was no bombs being dropped on them. So when I, I realized that and I looked at the picture and I compared them, it really started to fade the facade that I had put around this picture and the meaning that it meant to me within the book at the time. And I really truly understood. So I've gone ahead and found a wide version of the picture, plus actually photos that kind of surround it and what the group, the crowd actually looked like the day that they were having this outdoor event. So my question to you is, what does the picture say to you now when you envisioned it in the book and you looked at it yourself? Did, did you see the same picture? Did you feel the same way? An invented horror can be quite overwhelming, but there is shame as well as shock in looking at a close up of real horror. This next series of photos that I'm not, I'm sorry, not photos, port drawings that I chose to share really opened up the way that I looked at art and the way that you look at invented and made handmade drawings and art and the way that it affects you. And it was just very powerful to me, that quote, and I really wanted to include it with my evaluation of the second photo. So this is called the disasters of war. And this photo in particular is called, this is worse. Uh, in the book, Sontag near the, the introduction of this series quotes, all the trappings of the spectacular have been eliminated. The landscape is an atmosphere, a darkness that is barely sketched in. War is not a spectacle. So during this time era, there was a lot of pictures of, you know, Napoleon on his horse and, you know, guns and cannons and just lots of war spectaculars. So Goya's interpretation of the war in Spain was very different than what had been. It was, he actually made a turning point in the way that artists were drawing the war. These pictures in particular are a depiction of Napoleon's soldiers who invaded Spain in 1808. And it was to keep, the reason they had invaded was to keep the Spanish from resisting the French ruling. It's the picture of This Is Worse is number 37. And all of the pictures are numbered in a series of 83 different drawings that were centered around the brutality of these attacks on civilians. I chose to discuss these paintings in particular or drawings because of the nature and how they were drawn. There's really no background. There's no war weapons. It just gives a depiction of the brutality, the mutilation, the torture. And it was really all just to force people to submit to France. Each image is captured with a brief lamenting wick, uh, wickedness of the invaders and the monstrous of the suffering that they inflicted. So every drawing and sketch is titled with a very small caption. This very horrific depiction of decapitation and dismembering is called um, crud, I have to use my Spanish here, the great accomplishing something with the dead, which just the, the very lack of words is very powerful. And I'm sorry that my Spanish probably was just terrible, but I, again, I have anxiety and you just put me on the spot, I, but you know. Um, so finally, really to 
take another look at this. She supports her argument by accusing the artists to be inflicting awakeness, shock, and to wound the viewer. The art of war took a turn with his work. The work was used to provoke and badger those who viewed the paintings, not just the image that's etched itself, but with the captions. These intrigue us to continue to keep on looking at the entire series with not just words, not just the words, but were telling us, but perhaps to tell us what to feel. And I thought that that was really, really powerful because these very few words had the capability of almost telling you what to feel when you look at them and charging you and making it very emotionally captivating. Ordinary language fixes the difference between handmade images like Goya's and photographs by convention that artists make, drawings and paintings, while photographers take photographs. I just felt like this quote was really important because it really ties in the fact that language and art can be just as powerful as a photographer taking a frame. As I move on to my third and final image from the interpretation of her novel, this quote really stuck out to me really, really deeply. Um, this was in a chapter where they were discussing Nazi Germany and what the photos of the concentration camps had the capability of doing and that photographs, they do something else, they haunt us. And I really felt like this rang really true, but I had never thought about it in that sense. So as I read on, we come to the picture of the Serb militiamen casually kicking what appeared to be a dying Muslim, Muslim woman in the head as, as she was either dying or already deceased. I really, as I read through this portion, I really decided that I wanted to include this in my own interpretation and evaluation because of some of the quotes that surrounded things and some of the chords that it kind of struck within um, issues that I'm seeing within my own classroom. So Sontag says, harrowing photographs do not inevitably lose their power to shock, but they are not much help if your task is to understand narratives can make us understand. And that's one of the really, really important parts when you're looking at photographs and paintings and artwork and articles and reading and evaluating is really truly being able to understand what it is you're looking at and having something to support what the claim is, which is what we've been learning about all this semester. So I feel like it's holds something in common really powerfully with what we're going through in this era that we currently live in. Personally, I, I talk about having a student who is in my course actually currently, and everything I almost teach her or she views or sees, she tells me that she's learned already and that she compares these two videos that she has seen on TikToks, these little short you know, videos that people make. And I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's really, really frustrating. And it's unfortunate that young adults have grown up and learned from the internet. And that my student and many other people who don't even know it are not even aware of what a narrative really is and how important it is to understand what they've learned by having that narrative and having that to back them up and having that to confirm it. While this photo is moving and the photo 
is a depiction of death and gross mutilation of dying women, it really does not tell us anything about what we need to know about understanding the war, when the war was, where it was, and what led up to this frame that was caught by the photographer that took it. Which again is so important when we're sharing things on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and things like that. We, I just really feel like it's important to mention that this has kind of been lost in translation as, you know, we've gone through this pandemic. So now I'm gonna move on to the three photos that I do, decided to include in my evaluation. This one is uh, titled, A Woman That Walks Through the Shattered Streets of Haiti. Now this is from 2010 and I understand, you know, that we were supposed to do it in the last 10 years, but I'm gonna be really transparent with you guys. I'm much older than most peers in my classes. And I chose this event, although it was 12 years ago, because when this was happening, I was a young adult. And I remember being aware for the first time of the misinterpretation of pain and of suffering for financial gain. At the time of the event, I also remember the large celebrity studied events that they seemed to have on like every channel and the events that Red Cross was holding and just taking and distributing, you know, the money that was just flooding in for this disaster. I remember being really frustrated because I just felt like it was consuming every single airwave. And while I thought that it was very tragic, I've always been very skeptical of giving money to those and having them launder it to however it needs to go and trusting that it's going to get where it needs to go. While I was watching this, these telethons, there was this picture that was just stuck in my mind. And it was of this woman here and it was shared repeatedly. And I just remember it vividly. And, you know, my interpretation is that at the time it was probably her sitting with her child appearing to be devastated and left with nothing but cement ruins. It was shared online, it was shared on the news, and I'm sure on many other outlets. This photo in particular does not tell us what's happening. It's just a frame. It does not tell us what these two had before the earthquake, or even who these two are to each other, which I feel like it's important that we think about these things and we think about what we're looking at because without it, we don't know what's really going on. We don't know what she's thinking. We don't know what she's been through. We don't know that that's her child and we can't use a clear and sensible mind. As a mother, this photo pulls on my heartstrings, but what I had the sense to question, I was not fooled by what the photo was enticing me to feel. And if I had, then I probably would have given my money to somebody like the Red Cross without thinking. But even at the time, even though I did care, I just, I didn't want to take that risk not really knowing what was true and what was not. And I, I feel like this is a really good example of getting emotionally involved with one picture and one scene and one frame without really knowing exactly what's going on. We know that the earthquake was true, but really beyond that, we are looking through it through someone else's lens, hoping and praying that they're telling us the truth. I decided uh, for my second photo to add an evaluation of a picture that I have seen shared on my social media that I've seen on the news and to discuss very, very, very superficially uh, about the war in the Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine right now that's going on. Uh, so at first glance, when I first saw that photo, I thought something totally and completely different than what was going on. And so at first it appears, if you just look at that at face value, without reading the headline or, which a lot of the times, you know, these pictures are getting shared 
and they have no headlines. It's a screenshot of just a picture, which in my case, it was just a picture and somebody, you know, saying some message and resharing the picture over and over again, never saying what the story was about, just being emotional. So at first glance, it appears that this girl is left alone, separated from her parents, terrified as bullets fly by her, which it's really easy to assume that when we're talking war, we're talking about um, missiles, you know, and all the attacks that Russia is making. It appears that by her face, there's extreme fear and confusion as she stands there holding maybe onto a wall or onto a sheet in front of her, not even in a house outside of somewhere where she's unprotected. One thing that's for sure is unfortunately in this day and age, children being murdered in war and left in what's called depicted devastation, left defense for themselves, cells. Not only on TV, but in the newspapers and on Facebook. Facebook is a multi-billion dollar company that makes money off of ads and us sharing what they need us to. While my interpretation of this photo that was shared on social media was completely incorrect, uh, it, it just goes to show that what we see and what we interpret may not be real. In fact, this child was, is a refugee. She's outside of a tent at a refugee camp and she's being forced to say goodbye to her father. She doesn't want to leave him and she's leaving with her mother because her dad is having to stay behind and protect his family. So it's just, it's just a really good depiction of, again, letting your emotions get the best of you, uh, you know, really just getting involved in something that you don't really truly know what's going on in. And finally, for my third and final image, I decided to include some documentation of one patient and one face. I didn't include more than one this patient named Louis, he really struck a chord with me and, and he was enough. His pictures are beautiful in his last moments. And I decided to include some things in my evaluation about the pandemic of COVID-19 that we are just starting to come out of. So this is this series of photos is called documenting the coronavirus pandemic through the lens of the patients and the staff at Holy Name Medical. These were taken in New Jersey. Like I said, full disclaimer, there was a lot that I wanted to say surrounding this with my evaluation. And when I, like I said, when I don't write it down and have it to see right in front of me, I forget the most meaningful things that are on my mind. So I really decided to share about the pandemic as maybe opposing, maybe just another perspective. There's something to be said about a photo gallery or a single photo that is disclosed with a single diagnosis or a spoken ailment, but without captions on every photo. A lot of Sontag's novel is for argumentative and awareness purposes so that we are capable of making true and right um, evaluations and interpretations of the things that we're seeing when we're arguing. It's my own belief that in some cases you should use memory and imagination while viewing some content. So really without using your heart and memory and including your own interpretation, in my opinion, with these photos in particular, other than you'll be left with nothing other than pictures of someone's final moments. This is a depiction of some of the effects of the virus, of what the virus is. And while there are many controversies that surround this virus and the pandemic that we are getting through, you can't dispute that the virus is real and real people die every day due to this horrible disease. So while you might not believe everything mainstream media says, you don't wanna take the chance of catching this man-made virus and giving it to someone you love or someone maybe you don't know and doing your part to not spread this disease. 
while the context that the viewer creates beyond what's given to them in this photo might not hold true or valid. If the pictures made you think twice about this virus and how contagious it is and deadly it truly is, then these photos have done its job to bring awareness from the hospital's perspective. And I do believe that using one's memory and personal experiences in some cases is a greater part of understanding some certain situations. So with that all being said, with all six of my images, I wanna share a final and personal response to this assignment. I personally believe that Sontag's book is needed now more than ever in 2022. With my photos of war, disaster and pandemics that I've shared, it is vital that this generation has knowledge to understand, evaluate and analyze claims, photographs and paintings, etc. The internet and social media only became more prevalent as an educational tool due to the pandemic. The effects are devastating. Even at my capacity, I am feeling the repercussions in my own medical assisting concepts class. The youth and young adults not only believe everything they see and read, but they will not hear anything that opposes it. They become defensive and some have even become enraged with something other than what they believe is true. While I have surrounded it among the youth and, and young adults, there are they are not the only offenders. Grown adults are just as much to blame. In my own opinion, this is a pandemic that came with the pandemic. My own worldview has been affected in such a positive way since reading this novel. While it's not the most exciting thing I've ever read, it made my worldview wider. I would have never had the knowledge to even begin questioning the photos or paintings of things I saw in school as a child in paintings or paintings in my textbooks. I have just always trusted most of the things I have read and viewed with little question because most of the content appealed to authority and I had no previous or had no tools to research to prove otherwise. With that being said, that is going to conclude my PowerPoint. I do appreciate you watching it. I know that it's very wordy um, and I do appreciate you watching it to the end. And I hope that you enjoyed all of the photography and all of the things that I did try to put in there to, to show you and give you a view of what my interpretation and evaluation was like. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Bye.